everyone. Um, my name is Tanika Gray, and these are my team members, Lee Zing and Daryl Kuhn, and we're representing 10 international business volunteers. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentations. We hope you like our suggestions. So, So where do we start? We start by looking at the end. We start by creating a vision. As the former CEO of General Electric said, we need to create a vision and develop steps to achieve this vision. Through researching and learning about, um, about pathology, we decided upon these three principles to decide um, how to create our vision. Micro philanthropy and sustainability are the current goals of pathology, and, the, and our long-term goal is to include government involvement. The main idea behind pathology is to um, the main idea behind pathology is to make education more accessible in developing countries. The problem is that pathology can only do so much. To affect systematic change, um, government recognition is is necessary. If local governments can adopt and replicate projects funded by pathology, more drastic changes in regards to education in developing countries can occur. In terms of sustainability, we want to avoid a culture of dependency. The risk is greater for Gavology, especially because Gavology works with a lot of young students. So we want to make sure that the focus is on education and not on gaining donor aid. Um, the third principle is microphilanthropy. Um, we want to make sure we want to make sure that people understand why microphilanthropy is more effective than traditional methods of philanthropy. By looking at these three principles, we created a long-term vision. Our long-term vision for Gavology is developed a sustainable and healthy source of funding for effective projects by NGOs internationally. And we want government, uh, governments to adopt some of these projects. Our proposal is to, our proposal affects all three portions of, uh, all three portions of Kabbalah. We want to affect the projects, the partners, and the donors. On the projects, we want to make sure to put the focus on projects and not individuals, because they affect more students. We also want to make age restrictions in terms of the partners, we want to focus on urban partners and also on the breadth, on the depth within countries as opposed to depth among countries. And in terms of the donors, we want active marketing and repeated donations. Now my partners are going to talk about each of these three principles in more depth. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Li Zheng, and I'll be bringing you through our first two recommendations. So let me start with the projects. First, we believe that ecology in the long run should actually focus on funding projects instead of individuals because it will be more sustainable and you have a greater impact. It is stated in the current annual report that each project on average supports and impacts over 100 students, whereas the amount of funding required for each project is just slightly more than the amount of funding required for an individual child. So from this, you can see that funding projects will actually have a greater potential impact on the ground than funding each individual children. Additionally, we believe that projects will be more sustainable in the long run. We recommend that Givology adopt a matching principle. So how this works is that for every additional dollar that the NGO raises to fund a project, Givology will match, say, for example, five dollars on its own part. So in this way, it prevents dependency and it keeps the NGO on its toes lean and resourceful. We understand that many donors now are currently drawn to Givology because of the many stories of children that they read on the website. To prevent the erosion of the donor base with the shift in focus from projects to individuals, we recommend that Givology upload stories of how individual children have benefited from the projects that we are currently funding. However, we are not suggesting that Givology do away with funding individuals altogether. What we merely recommend is that there should be no communication between children under the age of 13 and their donors. Why we feel this way is that we believe that children under the age of 13 are too young to actually have meaningful conversations with their donors. And such conversations might actually lead to negative results such as dependency or lead them to develop unhealthy mindsets. So to sum up my first uh, recommendation, we believe that in the long run, Givology should focus on projects instead of individuals. Moving on to the partner front, our second recommendation would be for Givology to focus on urban partners and to go for depth and not breadth. We believe that urban partners offer Givology three key advantages. First, urban partners are more likely to have internet access that is reliable, allowing them to give Givology regular updates, improving communication, transparency, and accountability. Secondly, 
Successful programs run by these urban NGOs will be located in the cities, which means that they will be able to attract the attention of the central government. The central government will be more able and have more resources to adopt these projects and implement them on a national wide scale instead of, say, a state government in the rural areas. Thirdly, it will be easier to evaluate the NGO. For example, by measuring rates of employment of these children in the future, Ubology can pick out the most effective NGOs and the most effective projects to fund. So, moving on, why we suggest depth and not breadth ties in with our long term vision for Ubology as a whole. That Ubology would be a source of funds for sustainable projects that captures the attention of the local government. So, how to best achieve this would be actually to channel funds into a few large scale and scalable projects in these urban centres instead of spreading the funds out over a large area and over a large number of projects, each of which has too small an impact to actually garner much attention from the government. So at present, Devology's impact is rather diffused, having funded 29 individuals and 4 projects in over 9 countries, which averages up to about 3 students and 0.4 projects per country. So we actually recommend focusing on 2 countries each in each of the main areas of development, for example, Peru and Brazil, Ghana and Uganda, China and Indonesia. So why these countries is because we feel that there's much to be done for education in each of these countries. And that the government has shown willingness in the past to actually adopt some projects that are run by NGOs and translate them into a na nationwide sustainable project for the whole country. So to summarize what I've just said, Ubology should focus on working with urban partners and go for depth and not breadth. Now, my partner Daryl will bring you through our last recommendation and the implementable action plan. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. So, as you've seen, the two recommendations which we have presented thus far, they mainly pertain towards our two strategy in terms of who we work with and what we work on. But in order to be as effective, another area we want to address, which is not one of the case questions in particular, is actually what geology must do at home in expanding micro philanthropy as its model, which is based upon. So, firstly, there are two main key areas we're trying to cover. Firstly, scope, and secondly, iteration. So, firstly, for, for micro-philanthropy to be an effective concept, it has to have a large scale because it leverages small dollar donations. So to be effective in funding projects, it has to have a sufficient critical mass of donors to be able to have effective, to be an effective source of funds. And so what we propose for Pivology is actually to leverage our constituent donors to expand in an exponential manner by using their networks of contacts of families and friends instead of passively waiting for them to come to our website. So in, do, in so the way, we have to take note of two, two different segments of donors. Firstly, those that are willing to put an effort to reach out to their friends, and secondly, those who are not so willing to put an effort. So to address the first group, we should have practicable programs that are easily adaptable. So one specific example is to have logistics and a plan for a birthday party that, that donors could adopt depending on their birthdays, where they elaborate more about Givology's work and encourage their friends to donate to Givology rather than give them a birthday present for the year. And this is something I personally have done last year and I found it really effective. And secondly, in addressing the group of people who are less willing to make this active effort to skin to reach out to their friends, we should leverage social media. For example, for those of you from Penn who have ordered through campus food, you know that when you order through campus food, there's an option to have a status update on your Facebook to say that I ordered through campus food, and this generates awareness for Tipology's work, and the awareness that things are still ongoing with the organization itself. So this is something that Tipology should effectively work on to promote, promote awareness among people about Tipology in general. And secondly, if you look at American philanthropic giving in the States, 35% or 106 billion of it goes to religious organizations, and this is by far much larger than the next largest group. And if you ask why, Eileen Heisman, the CEO and the President of the National Philanthropic Trust will tell you it's because of repeated giving. Religious organizations are more willing to ask repeatedly for you to donate, and people are thus more willing to give repeatedly. So, with this in mind, this is a concept that people should adopt. Rather than just having donors coming once, one time, and giving one sort of donations, you need to engage them repeatedly 